Hi everybody, so today we're going to be talking about chemoreceptors and chemoreceptors are basically receptors that we find in our bloodstream or in our blood vessels and also in the medulla oblongata and what they're going to measure is the amount of gases and ions that are in our body and then it's going to take appropriate action by sending signals to some part of the body such as the medulla oblongata where our body can take action such as increasing or decreasing the amount of breathing we do. So let's go ahead and take a look at these and there's two types, okay? The first type is going to be our cent central chemoreceptors. Okay, and these are going to be found up in the medulla oblongata, which is in the brainstem. I'm going to draw a picture of it in just a minute. And these are going to sense the amount of carbon dioxide and the amount of hydrogen ions in an area. Now remember, as I increase the amount of hydrogen ions, I decrease the pH. Okay? The second type are what we call peripheral chemoreceptors. And these are going to be found in areas such as uh, the carotid arteries and also in the aorta. I'm going to draw a picture of that in just a minute. And these are going to measure the amount of oxygen, the amount of carbon dioxide, as well as the amount of hydrogen ions also. So you can see the difference between these two is this one is going to measure oxygen, whereas the central one does not. So let's go ahead and take a look. And I'm going to start off with the central chemoreceptors here. So I'm going to draw a picture of the brainstem. All right, and this will be my medulla oblongata here. This would be my pons. This is the midbrain. This would be the cerebrum, okay, and then my cerebellum would be back in here. The main thing I'm concerned about is the midbrain, is the brainstem right here. So in the brainstem, we are going to have something called respiratory centers in here. So we got we got respiratory centers here in the medulla oblongata. We also got some that are in the pons. Okay, so that's my respiratory center. Right. Now, the other thing we have in here is we are going to have our chemoreceptors, right? So the chemoreceptors are going to be nerves. I'm just going to draw a few of them that are going to basically send signals to our respiratory center here. So let's go ahead and take a look at this real quick. And I am going to draw, I'm going to take this part right here and I'm going to draw it over there. So I'm going to make this my chemoreceptor, and there's the part that's going to go to my respiratory center. So let's draw, let's draw a few of these here. All right, and then what I'm going to do is I am going to draw my respiratory center here. All right, so there's going to be my respiratory center. Let me just move this over just a little bit. So this down here, we're going to draw our blood, this is a capillary here, okay? And now remember, you have capillaries that are going to be all over. So now let's say we have our carbon dioxide that's going floating around in here. We got CO2. Now the way that CO2 normally works is as you build up CO2, it usually goes into the bloodstream, right? This is my bloodstream. And then you're gonna go up to the lungs and you're gonna breathe it out. All right, so go in here, go to the lungs and you breathe it out. Now, let's say you're doing something now and the amount of carbon dioxide in the blood starts to build up and it becomes saturated. So now we can't get this carbon dioxide coming very easy into the bloodstream because the bloodstream already has enough, right? So what's gonna happen now is this is going to start building up in this area here. And what it's going to do is it's going to stimulate or maybe even go inside of these chemoreceptors right here. <clears throat> so if we look right here, again, this is my chemoreceptor, right? So we are going to stimulate these, right? So now I'm going to get the buildup of carbon dioxide in here and around in here, and it's going to stimulate these. So what this is going to do now is it's going to increase the number of signals that are going up here 
to my respiratory center. And then what's going to happen is my respiratory center is going to change my breathing rate. Right? If I've got too much carbon dioxide, it's going to increase it. Now, the other thing to remember about carbon dioxide is carbon dioxide actually has a relationship with water. So usually what happens is we have carbon dioxide and it's going to bond with water. And when it does, it becomes H2CO3 for just a minute. And then what's going to happen is it's going to become HCO3 and then H plus. So we're also going to start to get a buildup now of the hydrogen ions, like we were saying. So as I get a buildup of hydrogen ions, I decrease the pH, like I explained a second ago or before, I'm gonna decrease my pH. And as I decrease the pH, that's also going to increase the stimulation of these chemoreceptors. And it's going to increase also the amount of signals get into the respiratory center so the respiratory center can take some action on that okay so that's going to be the central chemoreceptor let's take a look real quick at peripheral chemoreceptors so we're going to erase all this and here's what's going to happen with my peripheral chemoreceptors so the first thing i'm going to do is we're going to draw a heart way over here and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to draw an aorta. So I'm gonna draw that a little bit bigger. So if we go like this, there's my aorta, right? So then I'm gonna get my brachiocephalic trunk, which is going to split into my left, I'm sorry, my right common carotid artery and into my subclavian. So this is my right common carotid. And then coming off the aorta also, I am going to have my left common carotid. Okay? And then what's gonna happen is my common carotids are gonna have the carotid sinus, and then it's going to split into my external carotid and my internal carotid. So it's gonna be my external carotid, this is going to be my internal carotid, and I'm gonna get the same thing here. So my sinus, my carotid sinus, internal carotids, and external carotids. So now, here's what's going to happen. I'm gonna take this part right here, and I'm gonna draw that part that's right here, right in here, a little bit bigger. So if I just scoot this down just a little bit, and I get it like this, right? And coming off of here, what's going to happen is you are going to have capillaries big. Okay, we're gonna have capillaries in this area. So remember, this is this would be my external carotid, this would be my internal carotid, and then I'm gonna get some capillaries coming off of this area here. And then in this area, I am going to have some cells. And these are going to be called Lomus cells. Okay, so there's my glomus cells right there. Now, the capillaries and the glomus cells are going to make up a respiratory center. Okay, this is going to make up a respiratory center. I'm sorry, it's going to make up the carotid body. Body. This is going to make up a carotid body. So we call this a carotid body. Okay, and then if I go back over here, I am gonna have, so this would be my carotid body in here, right? There's all my glomus cells. And then real quick, I have the capillaries coming off of here. And then I have one over here too. All right, so once again, these are my carotid bodies. there and there. Now, in the aorta, what's going to happen is I'm also going to have a carotid body. So in this case, it's going to be 
right in here. So once again, I get capillaries coming out of here. And then I'm gonna have glomus cells in here. All right. So this is going to be called my aortic body. So these are the chemoreceptors, right? I have the glomus cells with the capillaries. That's going to be my chemoreceptor right there. So let's take a look now at what's gonna happen. I'm gonna draw some glomus cells, okay? So if you remember, over here, we talked about how all these blue things are glomus cells. Let's take a look at the glomus cells real quick. I'm just gonna scoop down over here. And this is the way it works. I have, I have a capillary coming across here. I, like we said, we have capillaries that are in there, right? And then I'm gonna draw my glomus cell. So here's my glomus cell right here. Okay, so now, basically what's gonna happen is oxygen comes out of the bloodstream and it goes into this glomus cell. And then what's gonna happen is eventually, the, the glomus cell is going to use the oxygen and it's going to convert that oxygen into carbon dioxide. Okay, so it's gonna convert this into carbon dioxide. And then the carbon dioxide goes out into the bloodstream. Okay, that's the way it's supposed to work. But let's say something happens now and I have a decrease in oxygen. So I start exercising or something like that and my oxygen level goes down, but at the same time, my carbon dioxide level is gonna go up because I'm using the oxygen I have. So here's what's going to happen is when the oxygen level goes down, so I got a decrease in oxygen, down in here, we have what we call vesicles. And these vesicles have something inside of them that we call neurotransmitters. So when the oxygen level goes down, what's going to happen is these vesicles are going to bond with this cell membrane right here, and it's going to release these neurotransmitters in there. Right, so we're gonna get a, it's going to release these neurotransmitters. Now, the other thing we have in here is right here, you have a nerve cell, a neuron, right here. So what this is going to do now is those neurotransmitters are going to come across and they are going to stimulate this nerve cell. And then that's gonna send a signal to the brain again, to the medulla oblongata, and we'll change our breathing rate, right? So if I don't have enough oxygen, I'm gonna to start to increase it. Let's look at the opposite side. Like I said, the oxygen becomes carbon dioxide. So just like we saw a minute ago, if I start using up, if I start making a lot of carbon dioxide, I'm gonna get a lot of carbon dioxide building up in the blood. And carbon dioxide may be able to even come out, but it's not gonna be able to go into the blood. So now I start to get an increase in carbon dioxide. The same thing is going to happen. If I get an increase in carbon dioxide, it's going to cause these vesicles to release these neurotransmitters on the inside, which is going to stimulate this nerve, which is gonna send a signal to the brain again, to the respiratory center, so you change your breathing. Now, just like we saw a second ago, we had, we said carbon dioxide will bond with water to become H2CO3, and then almost immediately it becomes HCO3 with hydrogen ions building up, right? So we're gonna get more hydrogen ions. When we get those hydrogen ions, we're gonna lower our pH, and guess what that does? It causes these vesicles here to release their neurotransmitters into the synaptic space here, which is going to stimulate this nerve and send a signal to the brain. So here's the thing also, is if we go back over here and take a look, like we said, we have nerves which are coming off of here. All right, so here, here's our nerves that we were just talking about. Now, the nerves that are gonna come off the aortic body is going to be our vagus nerve, also known as cranial nerve 10. Up in here, 
the nerves that are coming off are going to be the glossal pharyngeal. which is cranial nerve nine, okay? And then again, these are gonna go back up to the uh, brainstem and it's gonna change and it's gonna stimulate the respiratory centers and then you're gonna change your respiration rate. So that's it for our chemoreceptors. And if you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.